Hi YouTube, welcome back to my channel, Alexandra here. I hope you're all doing well. We're in a new space. Um, so yeah, I moved. Uh, that, we're gonna get into that, cause that's a lot, that's a whole lot. Um, I'm doing a chatty get ready with me. I haven't done one in like six months. There has been so much that has happened, good and bad in that time. I need to catch up on. So this is like awkward. I haven't fully unpacked yet. So I don't have like my beauty dressing room all set up yet. Uh, so this angle is gonna be like kind of weird to do my makeup, but I'm gonna try to like talk to you guys and do my makeup at the same time. So first thing is I'm going to go in with my professional uh, pore primer, pore filling primer. Okay, so where do I want to actually start? Um, things have been hard. I don't know if you guys have noticed in some of my videos that I haven't been like, kind of go like this emotionally um, due to the fact like I've just had a lot going on. I mean, I know there's a lot going on in the world for a lot of people I and mean, everybody reacts differently, but anyways, it's just been a lot the last four months. So in some of my videos, I just haven't been super enthusiastic or like my energetic self in some of them. Um, I've been pretty depressed the last few months. Things have just been like a lot. So um, yeah, I haven't been feeling super motivated. So sometimes I'm like up, sometimes I'm like down. Trying to stay positive is difficult. So back in October, we, um, I'm gonna go in with this Mary Kay foundation. And I'm gonna try to go like fast. It's just difficult to get my words to connect, to come out. Um, so back in October, uh, for anybody that doesn't know, I live halfway like on the other side of the country from where my family lives. So back in October, um, my dad, who's in his 70s, uh, but he's in pretty good shape, uh, collapsed and he had to be rushed to the hospital and they did all these tests on him. And basically they found a uh, infection in his heart that went septic. And when it went septic, it broke like one of his main valves in his heart. So they had to do uh, emergency or schedule emergency um, open heart surgery. So as soon as they told me that, I immediately flew home. Um, I was concerned because of COVID as well. That was like a big thing. But if, obviously if he didn't get the surgery, then he would die because um, the septic had like put his body into, um, like just poisoned everything. So he had kidney failure and then he was on dialysis and they had to fix his heart thing. So I rushed home. Um, it was really shocking actually that that had happened. It was really unexpected, like I said. So I rushed home, flew home. Um, he did his surgery. He was uh, at like the Heart Institute in Montreal, which is like specifically a small hospital just for hearts. Uh, it's 150 beds. So it's very specific. And obviously his surgery um, was so priority that they like booked him within like three days of him getting there. Like he was gonna die if he didn't get it right away. I mean, that's why people get open heart surgery. So anyway, so he did get a surgery and that went okay. And um, his kidneys obviously were okay. They had done dialysis for a few days, but they got better after the surgery. And while he was in recovery, um, and he was scheduled to go home or to another hospital, but because of the septic, he would have to be in the hospital for a while because he needs to be on so much medication for that, an IV drip so many times a day. Um, sorry if I'm being so like all over the place, but I always am. So while he was in recovery, I left because I had to go back to work because I couldn't stay home even if I wanted to. I just can't afford it. I have a mortgage, like I couldn't afford to be gone for more than a few weeks. So I felt secure enough when he was in recovery that I could leave. And the last day that I saw him when he was in recovery, he was coughing a lot. And uh, he just, I said, dad, you're coughing a lot. Are you okay? You know, and I thought, oh my God, he has COVID. And he's like, no, they're just telling me that I have to keep coughing to clear my airways and everything. And I'm like, okay. And um, 
Then I left, came back here to Edmonton, and within like three days, my mom's like, your dad just tested positive for COVID. So that was really scary because he was already, um, had just had like, he had, it was very compromised, his immune system. So I was Im immediately really worried because I was like, oh my God, you know, great. Um, I'm gonna go in with this powder. Um, so that made me like really concerned. Me and my mom and my brother all tested negative for COVID, so that was good. Um, he clearly got it in the hospital, which really upset me because I know that it's like a worldwide pandemic, but it's like, this is supposed to be a COVID-free hospital. So it's sort of like, sometimes you go into the hospital and you come out with something else, you know, which is, if the thing that brought you in there didn't kill you, then you might get something else that will. Anyways, that was just, so, uh, we all tested negative, so he clearly got it in the hospital. And um, because he had a compromised immune system, um, it wasn't like he was in isolation for two weeks, which he was not allowed to have any visitors, which I did not agree with because if people have COVID and they die in the hospital alone, I don't agree with that. I'm sorry if family wants to take the risk of um, being with the family members, if they're gonna die, you should be allowed to be with your family members. Anyways, so I'm gonna use some contour here that I made. And um, he, that's a, that's a dark contour girl, calm down. <laughs> um, so he was in isolation for two weeks. Nobody was allowed in, nobody was allowed out, not even his wife. The rules were very strict in Quebec during COVID. They still are strict, I think. So he, had no visitors. I was concerned for his mental health. Um, while he was in there, he uh, was coughing a lot. He had like the, the shortness of breath. He like I could barely talk to him while he was in isolation because I felt like I couldn't hardly talk to him because I was worried that you know he couldn't breathe. You know I didn't want to make him talk, so I hardly spoke to him when he was in isolation. Um, I do know that when he was in isolation from the coughing his incisions for his heart surgery opened up three times, which made it get infected. They could not keep it closed, which is scary. Um, and then they're like, on the 14th day, they pulled him out of isolation. And then they're like, we're gonna put, um, do a, a surgery, but just one where it's like general or local, you know, not, not where you're totally asleep. They just would do like freezing on his chest area. And he was gonna be awake for the surgery and they were putting in three drains so while he was on the table getting the three drains put in, he passed out, fell into a coma. And then he was in a coma for three weeks, I think, three or four weeks, a long time. And while he was in a coma, because of his age and given his like already compromised immune system, um, they are like, he didn't have good chances of coming out of that. I'm using this bronzer. Um, they said that, uh, it was like less than 10% chance or something that he'll survive or, you know, and if he does uh, survive, we don't know what that looks like because of all the things that he's gone through with his body. So he, um, he, I didn't fly home right away because I wasn't really sure. We were just sort of waiting because he was already in a coma, which I know sounds bad, but I didn't really know. Nobody really knew. And then when he stopped responding to, uh, like medication or antibiotics for his heart infection that they couldn't keep closed. Uh, and then they did another operation where they were manually removing the infection. I decided to fly home at that point because he was no longer responding to antibiotics, which is really scary. And of course his odds were really, really bad. And I didn't, they, we weren't really told that his odds were 10% until I, I flew home. So I flew home, now this is like, Christmas Eve, I flew home. So he'd been in the hospital since the 25th of October. And uh, so I flew home on Christmas Eve. I immediately rushed to go see him. Uh, he was in the ICU, obviously, this whole time, basically. And I saw him for like 15 minutes because we weren't really allowed because of COVID. He was only allowed so many visitors for such a little amount of time, plus he's in the ICU. Uh, I saw him for 15 minutes. He was not, you know, awake he wasn't really there you know he was you know and uh then i left and then the next day in quebec everything got shut down 
Nobody was allowed in or out of hospitals. It didn't matter if you were his daughter or his wife, a family member, nobody was allowed in or out. So now I'm, I'm there and he's not in good shape. We, we were really like concerned of what was gonna happen. Um, you know, so I stayed for a couple more weeks. He did wake up from his uh, coma, but at that point he had had a stroke while he was under in a coma. He was, you know, and he was the worst case, like on a ventilator. He looked like a corpse, he looked dead. He, he was dead, he was on life support, but he woke up, I don't know how, but he did. And he had a stroke while he was under and he had bed sores. Um, obviously they weren't moving him in my opinion because he was a dead man. So they thought he was just gonna die. So why move him? So they left him to rot. I know that sounds bad, but that's my opinion. Um, so this is my Mac paint pot in soft ochre. So he woke up, uh, of course, nobody was allowed to go see him still because everything was shut down. I flew back two weeks later because again, I can't take all this time off work. I mean, I was already taking off like at that point, two months I had missed basically. Um, so that's stressful too. Like what do you do when you have, um, you know, financial responsibilities? I mean, of course I had some savings, but not like enough to take off a year. As, even if I would like to have been there for him for the whole thing, I really would have, but it's just, what do you do? So you're fighting with your emotions, logically, do you, what do you do? So anyway, so, uh, hard to remember the exact timelines here, but it was just all so horrible. So he woke up, I, flew, I was already flown back though, by the time he woke up, nobody was allowed in or out. That was that. Uh, they did eventually open everything up, but it took a long time. I think it was like three weeks, four weeks until they let like my mom go back in and see him. So then he woke up, he, was, he had all this stuff wrong with him still. Um, and then it took him a long time. Like they were still like, we don't know if he's ever gonna walk again. A couple of nurses did tell him that, which I think in my opinion is super wrong. Like you don't tell somebody that. Um, you tell them we're gonna do everything to hopefully get you walking again, you know? Or to the best of your ability to walk again. He is walking again. Like all the doctors that looked at his file, he'd been to like six different hospitals because of course different care at different hospitals. Uh, like the, he went to a rehab, which was the last one. Um, they're like shocked. They're like this man, he cheated death. He should have died. So anyways, it was just, so such a blur of time like I, everybody was I was so upset I was sure he was gonna die like uh, several healthcare professionals told me that like it just it was awful horrible terrible and like the real other kicker was on my way home I knew I was gonna get COVID on the plane because this is when the Omicron variant was very very abundant so I was sitting on that plane. I'm like, I'm gonna get it and I'm gonna get it on this plane. And guess what? I did get COVID on the plane. So then when I came back to Edmonton, I had to take a month off work because I kept testing positive for a month. And at my work, I'm not allowed to go back until I'm negative. That's just the policy. We have to test every single time when we go in for our rotation. So that was really great. That also added to like my stress. Like now my father's in the hospital, even though he was in a rehab at this point, it's just like horrible, horrible. My COVID was, very, very mild. I just had a stuffed up nose. I was really lucky, um, but some people were not. Uh, I'm gonna go in with this shade here, Brisk. It, it's just been like a, a whirlwind. Like I'm freaked out financially. I was worried for my father, especially worried for my father. Like I cried so fucking much in those three months where I really wasn't sure what was happening, which I'm sure everybody would like. I'm very close to my father and it was just, it was really hard. It was really, it was not a good time. But now he's finally home. He came home, we went home in middle of February. So he was there for like almost five months, October, uh, November, December, January, February. Yeah, like almost five months. Um, November, December, January, February. Yeah. Like, four and a half months or something. He was gone for a long time. It's just so, it's just really awful. So it's just like anybody, family member being in the hospital, um, you know, it's never, it's never fun. Plus like COVID with all the restrictions and not being able to see them was horrible. 
uh, and you know, I just felt so, um, like, I was extra upset because I felt like it was the hospital's fault for giving him COVID, which then he got the stroke from, you know, and it was just like, I don't, like, he's still, he's able to walk and he's able to drive and everything, but he does have, like, a bit of a, like, limp from the stroke. And he was like a very healthy, active man, very strong, very like go-getter. Like they called him a cowboy when he was in the hospital because they're like, he's gonna make it. At, when he was in the rehab anyways, at that point, they're like, your father's a cowboy. <laughs> so, you know, he's just a go-getter, kind of like feisty little old man. And um, yeah, like I just, I just didn't like the way most of the nurses were, <laughs> the system there is really broken, the healthcare system. It's overworked, underpaid, understaffed there's a language barrier. It's just not good. Not good. I argued with a lot of nurses. Um, you know, just wasn't, wasn't a good time. So I'm so happy that he is recovered to hopefully whatever extent. Uh, I think he will continue to probably make some gains. I'm using this shade now to deepen it up a little bit uh, in Undone. It's just, it hasn't been good. So that happened I'm just doing a very like basic kind of smoky eye today so that happened i'm not trying to be like all doom and gloom over here i swear it's been hard okay it's been really freaking hard well at the end of last year i felt like things were going like decent i was quite happy in october and i remember we went to the dog park with my friend and i was so happy and i was like things are things are good you know i'm happy with my relationship I'm okay with my job, you know, I feel like things are going good. And then bam, my dad, like just, it's not his fault or anything. It's just, that's just the way it rolls, you know? So don't get too comfortable because life will come get you. So everybody's happy and healthy right now. I'm so grateful for that. Uh, it's just been horrible. I can't even like focus when I'm talking about it. It's just been awful. Um, I'm going to go in with the Benefit Roller Liner little guy. I'm just gonna do this quickly and then get back to you guys. So, while this is all going on, to make things even more, <laughs> more of a time, I'm gonna use this Ilia mascara. I decide I'm going to do list my condo. Yep, um, it's something I've been thinking about for a really, really long time. So it wasn't like something that I just decided overnight. I kind of thought that I would list it this spring. Prior to my dad getting sick, I did um, I speak to several realtors. So it wasn't like the timing was sort of there. I just didn't think I would list it this soon in the spring, I guess I should say. I'm going to use this brown eyeliner for my brows. Um, can't find my sharpener because I haven't unpacked everything. So she blunt. I'm gonna just set it with some brown eyeshadow. They're a little intense today. So I listed my condo on a Thursday. This is back in February, last month. And it sold, or I shouldn't say, I listed it on a Thursday in February. By Monday, I had uh, an offer because seven people had come to visit it over the weekend and the Friday and it sold Tuesday. So, which is great. Wasn't really uh, prepared for it to go. This is my other naked one. I'm gonna use this shade for my inner corner. I'm just gonna use my finger. Um, so I wasn't really prepared for that, but it happened. Um, I, of course, priced it to sell. The market here is horrible right now. Um, really horrible, but I've been here for eight years and in that condo and I was just like, I'm done. I don't want to be here anymore. I can't be here anymore emotionally. There was a lot that happened during that time when I was there. Um, I've never really gotten into it or spoken too much about it on my channel, but I will, I think in another chatty get rid of me. So that's going to be a good one because it'll be filled with lots of tea. Um, but anyways, yeah, so I just was like, I'm done. I'm listing it. I'm out. I don't care. See you later. Bye. Peace. Whatever. I'm going to use this highlighter today. 
and um so yeah it sold which prices sell great um and because of like i had a 45 day closing or yeah closing date um because i work 15 days at a time away up on site i'm only home for like six days every 15 days so uh i knew things had to be wrapped up quickly i had to find a place basically right away which i did and then we just moved uh two days ago yeah two days ago this is a pretty highlighter it's kind of like a subtle highlighter it says i think it's called blinded by the light super cute have hardly used it uh but it's quite pretty uh, i was like either my condo's gonna sit for like a year which i was prepared for or it's gonna sell like within a month and it did so really really excited about that i will do a um like tour of my new place once it's a little bit more together <laughs> you know it's sort of like a chaotic mess right now i'm gonna use my siate london everyday vk setting spray This setting spray smells like coconut, so if you're into that kind of thing, you'll enjoy it. It's an okay setting spray, not my favorite, but she all right. Keep looking at this portion of the, <laughs> the, the screen here, so I know that's distracting. I'm sorry, I'm just trying to look at myself and use this as like a mirror as well, because this situation isn't great. I'm going to use my Jeffree Star Mannequin Liquid Lipstick Mini. I don't know if I like this shade. It feels a little orange right now, but it's cute. She's cute. But yeah, like getting back to the whole moving thing. Um, came home Thursday night. We moved Friday morning. It is now Sunday, Sunday fun day. And I've just been running around trying to get everything done. You know the joys of packing and unpacking. But um, it was actually not a bad move, considering I'd been at some place for eight, that place for eight years. Um, you know, eight years is a lot to unpack emotionally and otherwise. So um, I just feel like as soon as I sold my condo, and I knew I had to get out of there. Like I just, I knew, like I was just so emotionally over it, um, and I felt so relieved when they when it sold i just felt so like lighter so that was really nice so i'm not gonna put any lashes on today i usually do i usually wear policies all the time um i can't find my lash glue i know it's one of the casualties of the move so far um i haven't packed it it's probably it's packed i just don't know where it is so no lash glue and no lashes today sorry guys but um this is the final look it's very basic today basic bitch kind of day kind of a little smoky eye going on some nude lipstick a little basic highlight going on um but yeah so i guess just to like wrap this up um let me move this here so you guys can see me a little bit better um yeah, it's just been a uh, hell of a time <laughs> and um, some good things happened, some bad things happened. Uh, I'm hoping the rest of 2022 goes better. Um, we'll see. Um, I'm hopeful, <laughs> but uh, you know, it's just, it's been difficult. But that's just the way, the way it goes sometimes, right? So you gotta keep rolling with the punches um yeah so that's just like i'm sure i forgot a ton of things that i wanted to like talk to you guys about um those were like the few really main specific things i wanted to say and i hope you guys are all well staying safe and i will talk to you guys later